food processing with the government of Telangana. Uh, you heard uh, my boss talk in the morning about uh, the wonderful work that has been happening in the state of Telangana and, uh, uh, and uh, talking about the hospitality and the infrastructure of the city of Hyderabad uh, and the heritage and culture that we think. So, uh, one of the very important conversations that have been happening in the uh, government establishment at this point in time is around oil palm. And it's probably uh, uh, the most appropriate timing to have this conference here in Hyderabad because uh, all five years of the government and uh, the farmers of Telangana are actually on oil palm at this point in time. Uh, I wanted to elaborate on the conversation that was started in the morning by our minister uh, with respect to appreciate the real motivations around oil palm, uh, particularly in Telangana. Uh, because the situation of Telangana is quite unique uh, in India at this point in time, although there is this narrative uh, at the central government level about self-sufficiency, what we call as Atmanirvan Bharat, but Telangana, we have another motive which is uh, quite uh, pertinent at this point in time over and beyond uh, the concept of uh, self-sufficiency. So, if you look at uh, the story of Telangana in the last, uh, I would say, four to five years, has been that of a uh, huge amount of focus on the basics. And one of the basics that the state government has focused upon is water. Telangana traditionally has been a semi-arid area and mostly in the water shadow, uh, despite uh, the two large rivers that pass around the state. Uh, that is where the state government has embarked upon a huge amount of investment and effort towards bringing water inside and available to the farmers of the state. And what that has done is uh, what uh, our minister mentioned in the morning is nothing short of it. So what we are looking at is we are looking at doubling of the total area under renovation, correspondingly tripling of the gross zone area in the state, and effectively quadrupling deep paddy production in the state from uh, around 70 lakh metric tons to around 260 lakh metric tons. Telangana today is the second largest producer of rice in India. Uh, and this has been a transformational story uh, in the agriculture space, nothing short of a secondary revolution in India. However, as uh, uh, encouraging these numbers seem to be, they also create a huge problem for the state farm. Because a large amount of these paddy farmers are growing paddy with the expectation that the state government or the central government will buy this produce. This has created a huge amount of marketing and logistics problem for the state and the central agencies with respect to managing the farmer expectation and secondly, managing the produce that the farmer has uh, created. This, at this point in time, is the single largest problem in the agriculture space if you look at the government deliberations. The, the logical solution to this problem is to progress and progress towards higher value crops. The idea is to move the farmers away from paddy into higher value crops which the country at this point in time needs. Uh, as was mentioned, uh, India has a huge demand for edible oils and a great dependence uh, on imports for edible oils. And logically, uh, it was identified that oil palm uh, is one of the areas uh, that we can look at. Telangana has history in oil palm. With Malaysian collaboration about 30 years ago, Telangana has, uh, and uh, at that point in time, the United States of Andhra Pradesh has one of the largest area under oil palm in India. Uh, we have companies uh, that have operated in this space for the last 30 years. We have research institutes, we have technical know-how that has existed in this state. And then we have farmers who have been growing and reaping the benefits of oil palm in a certain part of the state. So it's not a new problem. 
it is also a crop which is uh, at this point in time very very relevant given the irrigation situation in Telangana. Telangana being a semi-arid area already currently has about 50,000 acres of oil palm under micro irrigation which is very different from what happens in uh, Malaysia or Thailand or uh, for that matter in Malaysia. We at this point in time are looking at growing oil palm at large scale under micro irrigation at the scale that has never been done anywhere else in the, in the world. So what we are looking at is this is the uh, picture that we look at when we are seeing the situation from the government's perspective. If you look at yields, paddy versus oil palm. If you look at annual incomes, paddy versus oil palm. If we look at water consumption, paddy versus oil palm. Another interesting thing to note here is that apart from all the assistance that the farmers get, electricity to farmers in Telangana is free, subsidized by the state government. So if we calculate the amount of electricity consumed by the borewell pumps to grow paddy versus to grow oil pump and the subsidy burden to the state government by virtue of that, if we look at that on a per acre basis, there is a differential of about 5000 rupees uh, per year. This is considering the subsidy that the state government is providing on account of electricity to farmers. So if we look at the money that gets saved here and the money that gets saved in the paddy procurement process, this switch has already started to become feasible irrespective of the returns that the oil palm actually makes to the farmers. So if we look at it, this is a much stronger motivation that the state government is being driven by as compared to the notion of self-sufficiency and foreign exchange and all the uh, imperatives that the central government has. So, this is an important point to understand why the state government is keen on this and therefore, because the motivation is so uh, urgent, the sense of urgency that the state government has. This, in a nutshell, is the Telangana state oil palm mission. Now, Anshukta mentioned that uh, there is a national mission on edible oils at the central government level. That mission targets to bring around 16 lakh acres under cultivation across the country over the next five years. Our state government wants to bring 20 lakh acres over the next three years in Telangana alone. So, the scale at which the state government is thinking at this point in time is even much larger than the central government's vision on oil palm at this point in time. So what we are essentially looking at is, we are looking at bringing 20 lakh acres under oil palm cultivation in the next three years, engaging around 500,000 small farmers on a voluntary basis. This as an agriculture extension exercise itself is a mammoth undertaking which is being done by extensive use of technology. So what the state government is, is doing at this point in time, there is a mobile app which is available to the farmers, they get enrolled into the program and the end-to-end hand-holding of the farmer starting from procurement of seeds to installation of drip irrigation to cultivation to intercropping to uh, the know-how around how to grow it, to harvesting and then eventually connecting them to the millers which have been granted zones uh, and it is being done under a regulation uh, by the state government as well as the central government. What we are looking at is, we are looking at uh, something which is quite game changing in, in the agriculture space and also in the sustainability space. That is an aspect of oil palm which is generally not uh, spoken about because oil palm is uh, evaluated in the context of rainforest versus oil palm. Uh, if we look at conventional agriculture versus oil palm, oil palm consumes one fourth of the water that a paddy uh, crop consumes uh, in, 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 the, in the way we grow. 
uh, if we look at the differential of 20 lakh acres moving away from paddy into oil palm, we are looking at 38 billion kiloliters of water saved every year in the irrigation context. Further, if you look at the carbon footprint of paddy cultivation, and when I am saying carbon footprint, if you look at the overall life cycle of the paddy cultivation and how much water is get, gets consumed uh, by paddy cultivation, uh, 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 how much carbon footprint it generates, rather. And if you look at the carbon footprint of oil palm relative to paddy, we see a net differential of about 52 million metric tons of carbon dioxide sequestered by oil palm across this 20 lakh acres. Now, in the COP27 deliberations, there is a, uh, uh, we, we hope that there will be a revival of the concept of carbon credits and plantation credits uh, would also come into picture. Hopefully, if not now, maybe in the near future. But at some point in time, as we are struggling with the climate crisis, we see that oil palm can actually be a contributor to the whole journey towards uh, net uh, zero carbon dioxide uh, emissions that the world has to uh, move towards. We are also looking at, so when we look at oil palm cultivation and when we look at countries like Malaysia, Indonesia, at this point in time, there is, uh, and, and when we visited, the, the general word on the ground is, it's hard to find labor. It's hard to get people to work in the plantations. In India, on the contrary, we are trying to look at the, our demographic dividend and how do we deploy that demographic dividend effectively and how do we employ people. Palm oil industry in plantation management and downstream processing, we feel that there is a potential of bringing about 250,000 uh, employment uh, in this industry uh, by this initiative that we have. Uh, there seems to be a huge potential in terms of, uh, so lately we have been deliberating around how do we improve, uh, you know, 5 trillion economy. India needs to get to 5 trillion uh, uh, GDP. Uh, this uh, sector itself, or uh, this initiative itself, we feel that will contribute to 10% increase to the state gross valuation. That's the impact that we are looking at in the agriculture space. Uh, in Telangana, uh, the way this is implemented, and this is for uh, the knowledge of uh, most of the foreign delegates here, that in India, the way agriculture happens and the way plantations happen are different from the way it happens elsewhere. In India, the companies do not own vast amounts of land. Captive cultivation is very, very limited. It is voluntary basis small farmers aggregated together that, that actually uh, uh, are the uh, growers. And the companies engage with these uh, uh, small uh, cultivators as a part of a regulation, particularly in the oil palm space, the concept of zoning exists, where a company is granted a zone in which the company is responsible for the seeds, the company is responsible for the mobilization of farmers, the company is responsible for uh, uh, the uh, extension services and the company is then eventually obligated to buy the uh, raw material and the FFB that is produced on the oil palm uh, uh, plantations. Uh, in this space we have uh, put together a very very effective framework in the state where on a collaborative basis the state agriculture department, horticulture department and the entire rural development machinery is operating hand in hand with the uh, private companies that are operating in the space in mobilizing the farmers, setting up nurseries, setting up oil mills and uh, eventually uh, uh, setting up the collection centers for uh, uh, the uh, supply chain that needs to be built uh, once the production arrives. Now, important uh, thing to understand is what this creates uh, as an opportunity downstream. There is clearly an opportunity of about one billion dollars of capital investment to come as a follow through of this production. We see clearly half a billion dollar of investment necessary to just set up oil mills to crush this uh, uh, FFB production that is going to come 
uh, from this plantation. Further, we see half a billion dollars of uh, investment that is viable in terms of downstream refining and downstream processing of the uh, various value added products. We have not yet started talking about value added products in India. The, con the footprint of food processing, the amount of food that is consumed in the processed format in India is minuscule as compared to most uh, uh, other countries, even when we compare to Malaysia, Thailand, uh, uh, Indonesia, the amount of processed food that Indians consume is very, very less. But that is fast changing. The Indian story is progressing more towards uh, processed foods, towards uh, retail, towards uh, you know increasing disposable incomes, uh, nuclear families. Uh, uh, a more like more uh, lifestyle which is fast moving and we see that the opportunity that exists in value added products derived from palm oil to be uh, uh, assimilated and consumed in the Indian context is huge. Uh, further, uh, certain areas that we have not looked at which is the byproducts that come from the uh, from the whole farm ecosystem in terms of animal feed, in terms of uh, uh, synergies with other industries. Telangana, incidentally, is a huge hub for life sciences. It is, uh, uh, so in, in that context, if there are any possibilities of deriving raw materials from this industry into the life sciences sector, into, uh, into the other sectors like textile, automotive, uh, etc., there is a lot of work that is uh, that needs to be done, and the state uh, government sees a huge opportunity for the industry to come and explore these possibilities in Telangana. And the state establishment is very, very receptive, very, very welcoming uh, to anyone who wants to have a conversation on this. And and we we'll, we'll be happy to sit across the table and work out uh, solutions, opportunities, and ecosystem for uh, moving forward in this election. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And uh, I'll be around for anybody who wants to have a further discussion on this. Thank you so much.